Hey everyone, welcome to Star Morph, where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. Today, we are gonna go into mid-journey. I'm gonna share with you some of the techniques that I use to create mid-journey images. I'm using this tool almost every day, and I have learned a few of the commands and parameters you can use, such as changing the aspect ratio, or changing the chaos setting, and things like this that allow you to really fine tune the images you're creating. And so I'm gonna share with you my prompt engineering guide on how to create great images with Midjourney. Let's get started. All right, let's get started using Midjourney. So I've gone ahead and add, added the Midjourney bot to the Starmorph Discord here. So before that, if you haven't yet signed up for Midjourney, you're gonna to wanna to go to midjourney.com and there's a option to sign in with Discord. Uh, you do have to get a subscription to use Midjourney and I believe it's $10 a month for the basic package, uh, 200 generations a month. That's been enough for me. So now that we're logged in, we can go into Discord. And the way that you create an image is by using the slash imagine command and then typing in your prompt. So let's say we want to paint a dog on the beach. We can say imagine dog on a beach. Okay. And Midjourney is very creative. So actually general prompts can come out with a great result, but Considering this is a prompt engineering guide, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to write detailed prompts that can give more images that are closer to what you're looking for. So the way I like to frame my prompts is I like to say the style that I want to create, and then I like to say the subject. So let's say I want to say I might make a pastel painting being the style, and then a pastel painting of a dog on the mountains being the subject. And then I'll add a bunch of other um, descriptions of how I want the image to look. So you can see these are pretty high definition by default. I could say something like ultra realistic, or I could say uh, minimalist. I could say black and white only. I could say uh, calligraphy. So you really have to think about what language you wanna use that's gonna describe your prompt. Um, and that's gonna help you really define what image you're outputting here. So that's pretty basic prompt engineering. Now let's go into some of the mid-journey specific settings that you can use. I highly recommend checking out the mid-journey documentation. I'll put a link to this as well as the other tools I mentioned in this video in the description. And you can see here in the documentation that we have a list of all these parameters we can use. So this right here, aspect ratios, is one of my favorite parameters because by default, Midjourney creates square images. And you know, on a lot of platforms, maybe a TikTok or Instagram, you want to use the taller, the 4.7 uh, vertical video um, sizing, or maybe you need to produce a landscape image for your blog and the 1.1 one, one, or, or for YouTube cover, and you want to use a wider uh, image. So the way we do this, go back in to Midjourney, and then we can say, create a, let's do a mountain. Let's do an ultra realistic mountain landscape. And then we're gonna say dramatic sunset lighting. Okay, just give it some descriptions. Then we can say dash dash AR aspect ratio. And then let's do seven, four. Okay, and that's gonna give us a wide. Did I type that incorrectly? Yes, I did, I made a typo. Extra colon here, seven, four. Okay, and we'll submit that, and that's gonna make a more wide format image. If you're unfamiliar with Midjourney, what we have here is it creates four images initially, and then you can kind of preview them, see which one you like. If you like one of them, you can either upscale it with the by clicking U, or you can make a variation of it um, by clicking the V associated with that image, and then Midjourney will run again and run the upscaling on that image. You can do, I believe, three jobs at the same time. If you try to do more than that, it will just queue them up. Um, and it takes, you know, I would say it takes about one minute per image. It's not, not too bad. 
So aspect ratio, extremely useful setting when you're creating prompts because you may need to change that. Another one we can use is the chaos setting. So chaos is going to give you more varied results. So you can see here that when chaos is 50 here, or when chaos is 100, you see a lot more variation in the results that you get, whereas these ones are all pretty uniform. So if you're still experimenting, you may want to use a high chaos until you kind of refine where you're trying to go. And then you could update your prompt to be, you know, maybe I like this one. Let me use some extra words in my prompt that are going to get more results like this. Or you could upscale or make a variation of this. So let's just take a look here at what that's going to look like. So let's say dog on a beach digital illustration chaos zero. And then we'll do the same thing again, but with chaos 100. Okay, here's our upscaled image that we just created before. And then here is our sunset dramatic landscape. Those are pretty cool. I'm gonna save that one. So the, I love Midjourney. It's my favorite text to image tool because I find that the quality of the images is just the highest out of Dolly and Stable Diffusion. I prefer the output of the Midjourney images. I think Stable Diffusion is more controllable, the styles, and it's kind of like a manual car. So it can be, if you're an expert driver, it can be a great tool. Um, I enjoy using Midjourney. I think it's it, it works really well for me. So taking a look here, I would say this one is like photorealistic. Oh, there's still digital illustration a little bit. I guess the variation we have here in the chaos version is we have some different compositions. We have a larger dog here. We've got the beach chair here. We have got some clouds here. So the composition of these is a little more varied than here. We have almost the same pose in all the dogs and the lighting has a little more variation. So that's what you get with the chaos parameter. We also have a quality parameter parameter by default it's set to one but you can actually set it i believe up to two quality two so assuming okay it looks like in the new version four you can only go up to one so that's not very relevant then because let's see if we can do a quality two let's test if we can do a quality two because if we can do a quality two, that means we can actually make a higher quality image than the default, and that's useful. But we may be using the V4 model, which no longer has quality two. So let's try this out. Dog on a beach, quality two. All right, we'll see if that works. Yeah, it's saying it does not accept two. So I expect this isn't really gonna work. Okay, let's see, what other prompts do we have here? We can also do image prompts. That's another key thing. So let's say I have a picture here. I'll upload a picture of the Star Morph logo. Okay, I'm gonna grab this logo. And what you can do is you can upload it anywhere. I'm just gonna upload it to Discord chat. And then I can copy the URL of that image and then I can make a prompt with that as the prompt and now I can say my description so I can say uh, design a let's say a metal let's say an ultra realistic or photo realistic sculpture made of rust uh, patina copper in an ancient cyberpunk futuristic artificial intelligence city okay this is kind of a crazy prompt i have no idea what's going to come up but let's just see what happens so the idea is it's going to base the prompt off of this image you can also choose how much it weights the image and how much it weights the text so by default it's going to weight both the image and the text together 0.25% is using the image and, or sorry, 25% of the image and 75% based on the text. If you want it to be more based on the image, 
you can update this dash dash IW property. So this is the image prompt. You can see that as you increase the IW amount, it's much more similar to the image. So do you want the text to take precedence or do you want the image to be the guiding feature? Okay, so looks like it made an artificial intelligence robot here. Um, this one's pretty sweet. So it integrated the, the image that we uploaded, as you can see, with the prompt. That can take more experimenting, but it's pretty cool that you know we can go image to image as well. All right, so that's a basic run through of how to use you know, mid journey, do some basic prompt engineering, use some of the parameters. Let's take a look at some other resources that you might want to use getting started with mid journey. The first is Lexica. Again, link in the description. Lexica is a search engine that it's actually not mid journey, it's stable diffusion, but it's a search engine where people have created AI art and you can see the prompt that they use to create it. So if you're new to prompt engineering and you're not sure what to write, this is a great place because let's say you want to make an image of a book. You can type in book here and you get all these AI art creations that people have made. And maybe you say, you know what, this is exactly what I was going for. I wanted a leather book and we can get an idea of what prompt they used um, or what language they used to help create this. I like this one. So, you know, cartoonish style book. So you can use their language to, to help design your prompt. And this is an, a useful resource. Another similar resource is called PromptBase, and this is a marketplace where you can buy prompts. So um, these are all mid-journey prompts. So let's say you know, you're making a video game or you're making a website and you need a cool 3D illustration. For $2, you know, maybe it's worth saving the time to design this um, rather than you could pay a you know a 3D model or thousands of dollars to build this, or you could get the prompt here and then create it yourself in Mid Journey. So this can save a lot of time, and I've bought a good amount of prompts on here. You can also sell prompts on here, um, which I've experimented with a little bit. So this is another great tool, and then the third tool that I'll mention is similar to the Mid Journey documentation. There's also the Mid Journey app. And here you can see all of the images that you've generated with Midjourney, and you can go ahead and save them or bookmark them, or I believe even, yeah, tell Midjourney, I like this image, show me more like this, or I don't like this image, don't generate more like that. And perhaps that will fine tune the model for your account. I'm not sure if they do that quite yet, but I assume that's the intention there. So that's a quick run through of getting started with Midjourney. No coding required. You can make some amazing images here. Uh, you don't really need to know AI. You just need to be comfortable sending a message in Discord. If you've ever used Slack um, or Team Chats, you know you should be able to do this as well. So let me know if you have any other questions. And I hope you found this helpful and have fun using Midjourney. If you want to hear more, see more artificial intelligence tutorials, web development tutorials, please like and subscribe to this video. It will help the channel out. And we're a small but quickly growing business, so we really appreciate all of you guys. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.